This box is an inverter. Its job is to take direct current from the battery and misdirect it in the form of alternating current to the motor. It plug the battery plugs into an inverter right here on the Prius. However, the Prius operates on 200 volts and I plan on this EV conversion running north of 300 volts, 400, maybe as high as 450. For that reason, as well as others, better explained by Damien, I'll post a link in the description to his video where he explains why we cannot plug in our EV conversion batteries to the OEM location on the inverter, something to do with table tennis. So I'm gonna bring you around and I'll show you where we will plug it in to the bus, bus system, which is essentially just a bunch of metal bars bypassing certain portions, certain components, and tapping in directly into the high voltage bus on this inverter, allowing us to pump in uh, more voltage into this box. Here we are behind the inverter, and this is one of the reasons why I mounted it where I have mounted it, and why it sits so high, is so that we have access to this area right here. I'm going to take the inverter out, put it on our workbench, and we will remove this plastic cap and you'll see the three bolts that hide behind there, two of which we'll tap into for our battery positive and battery negative leads. With the inverter on the workbench, we have now have easy access to this backside where we need to remove this plastic cover to expose the bolts that tie together, I believe, the bottom half with the top half of the inverter. And these bolts behind there would have to be undone in order to separate the lid and take the top part or the bottom part, depending how you look at it, of the inverter apart. I plan to use a heat gun and this pick I stole from my dentist's office to pry this open, maybe helping ourselves out with the flat screwdriver. And yes, I did pick the coldest day of spring to work on this.
Sorry guys, sometimes trying to get you guys to see what I'm doing while doing it is just really difficult. And it's not like I'm an expert at this. A lot of times it's my first time doing something as well. So, come on you. But I do try to share. Okay, so now we can see the bus bars. This is our battery negative, this is battery positive that we need. So before being too proud, I am going to mark these. Okay, I actually don't care about the pretty. I just want it functioning. So, one of the things we have to do is we have to extend these. And I just, at this minute, I can't find my spacers. So I have some other ones that I'm gonna try for testing low voltage, like running this on 30 or 60 volts just to get it to spin. You could just put two um, uh, screws in there, but I think I might have something that will work. Okay guys, now, obviously these were not meant to have cables connected to them. And, it, and how would we connect something here, right? We need to extend these if you will. So I plan on using one of these two aluminum um, posts, if you will. These are, really just spacers. Now this one here, maybe like an inch and a quarter. It's kind of flush with this, a little bit protrudes a little bit further out. I'm not a fan. This one now, I think it's an inch and a half. I'm gonna move the inverter and you can see how much, if I can get it in the right place, how much it would extend. So it's about right, maybe a little bit too far. And I went out and bought these metric M6 uh, 1.0 thread screws. So we can put these posts in there, right? And at this point, feel free to make all sorts of recommendations for spacer material of various types of unobtainium, uh, citing all sorts of apocalypses if I don't use the right kind. All joking aside, this is aluminum. Aluminum is actually a great form of uh, electrical conductor. Um, I know a lot of guys will recommend probably, what is it? Is it copper? I don't know if it's brass or copper, but you know, metals that conduct well. Gold, hell, I can make these out of gold. So I plan on using these two. Uh, keep in mind that right now I'm just going for a first spin, so all of this could change. And just to show off a little bit, I'm gonna put colored shrink wrap, not only just sh heat shrink on them, but colored one, okay, colored kind. And I'm gonna heat shrink that down. Again, just because I can, I think it's just kinda pretending to be a pro. So hopefully you guys can still see this. So I'm just gonna put it on a screwy driver so I don't burn myself. Obviously I wouldn't hold this in my hand, okay. It's funny because I'm trying to spin it and it's actually spinning. I don't understand that, those physics. Let me crank this guy up. I think this guy goes to 11, 1100 that is, Spinal Tap style. Yeah, it's spinning. It's, it's very loose on there, but it's still spinning, okay. Trying to crank it up while speeding this up. I cut the, cut the shrink wrap slightly longer 
uh, knowing that the last one I made, I cut it to length and it ended up being too short because obviously it shrank. So now this one is making me look foolish. Maybe it will shrink down. Uh, see, there it is. Uh, I don't know if you can see the tip. See how it became slightly shorter? That's what we want. Is Idiot going to touch it here while it's hot? Yeah, see how it starts out longer, but then when it shrinks, it's still shorter and a little bit protrudes out. That's, that's fine with us. Set that one aside. Let's do this one. I love this gun, man. And I'm not really loyal to brands. I happen to have a lot of DeWalt. It's yellow. I, I help guys out oftentimes. And then at night you're done. At, it's dark already. And you're built a patio for somebody or a fence. And you're looking for your tools. Well, my stuff is yellow and bright. So it stands out. I just run and get it. And I'm out of there. So, yeah, I'll show you just, hopefully you can see where that goes through. Not like you care, but. All right. Now we can put these in here. $2.29 per bolt. The guy couldn't believe it himself, the cashier. I go to this Ace Hardware a lot. I'm like norm of cheers in there. And uh, he's like, let me check where you got him from because I don't want to overcharge you. He couldn't believe how expensive they were. And he's like, oh yeah. He's like, are they metric? Yeah, they're metric. And obviously, you know, that justifies them being expensive i guess now you do see me using an impact a lot of times i will use it to loosen stuff up and i still tighten by hand and i know you've seen me tighten certain things with an impact but generally try to keep the bar belly on this one to a minimum You guys can see how it sticks out. That's what we want, right? Okay, I know we're beating an old horse to death. I just wanted to show you how much these stick out just to sum it up. And there it is. Now we can take, I've seen some guys take this and do a nice job of drilling two holes in there. And then you can pop this on and it, Provides a little bit of added support, but more importantly, I think it keeps all the dust out and so on. I will probably make some sort of a bracket on here. I'm sure there's guys who sell this, uh, who have 3D printed some sort of a proper um, bracket or housing. Uh, um, looking at you, Tom. So I will gladly buy something off of you guys. I don't have a 3D printer, so I can't print it myself. I haven't graduated to that level, but I think that turns out turned out good. So I'm gonna put it back on the car and go on to the next step.